Welcome back to the channel. We are taught to look for the real values of x given that x minus 2 all raised to the power of 2 is equal to the square root of x plus 2. Stick around because I'm going to be unveiling a trick that almost solved this question in one glance. Well, the magic to solving this question is noticing the similar structure on both sides of the equation. Let's use substitution to highlight this. So the first substitution that we're going to be doing, we say let the square root of x be equal to y. So if the square root of x is equal to y, when we square both sides, x will be equal to y squared. That's our first substitution. Now the second substitution, we say let what we have inside of this parenthesis, which is x minus 2, be equal to u. And then making x the subject, x will be equal to u. As 2 crosses, it becomes plus 2. So this is our second substitution. Now notice that from the first substitution, x is equal to y squared. And the second substitution, x is also equal to u plus 2. So we can equate them. So that means y squared must be equal to u plus 2. So this is our first equation. To get our second new equation, we turn back to our original question. And using our substitution, x minus 2 is u. So I'm going to be putting u here. So that will be u squared. This is equal to, now we have the square root of x. From our substitution, the square root of x is y. So I'm going to be putting y here. And then plus 2. So plus 2. So this is our second new equation. Now notice the symmetry in these two equations. The simplest way to solve symmetric equation is to subtract them. So we're going to be subtracting. So equation 1 minus equation 2. So equation 1, we have y squared minus the left side of equation 2 is u squared. This is equal to, now come to the right side, u plus 2 from equation 1 minus the right side of equation 2, y plus 2. So y plus 2. Now let's open up this bracket. So we have y squared minus u squared equal to, this is u plus 2. Now using this negative to open up the bracket, we have minus y minus 2. Now notice that 2 minus 2 is gone. So we are left with y squared minus u squared equal to u minus y. Very good. Now let's rewrite this equation. So this is y squared minus u squared. This is equal to u minus y is the negative of y minus u. I have to write it in this form because what we have on the left hand side is y first before u. Very good. So now let's move this to the left hand side. So we have y squared minus u squared. And as this crosses to the left, it becomes plus y minus u. And this is equal to zero. Now notice the identity here. This is difference of two squares which can be written as y minus u times y plus u plus y minus u and this is equal to zero. Now notice that y minus u is common so we can factor out y minus u open brackets. Now this divided by y minus u you have y plus u remaining plus y minus u divided by y minus u is 1. And this is equal to 0. So we have two candidates. We have y minus u to be equal to 0. Or we have y plus u plus 1 to be equal to 0. So we're going to be taking them case by case. So we'll call this our case A. So case A. This is y minus u equal to zero. I'm going to be moving negative u to the right hand side so that we have y to be equal to u. Now remember our previous substitution. 
Remember we said, let the square root of x be y. And we also said, let x minus 2, which is the terms inside the parentheses, be equal to u. So if y is equal to u, that means the square root of x is equal to u. Because y and u are both one and the same. So that means wherever I see u, I can put the square root of x. So I'm going to be putting the square root of x here in place of u. The square root of x. Very good. This is where we establish a condition. Since the right hand side is having a square root, that means the right hand side is always positive. And if the right hand side is positive, it means that the left hand side should also be positive. In other words, x minus 2 should also be positive. That means x must be values from 2 and above. So let's have this condition in mind. Now come back to our equation. To get rid of this square root, we square both sides. So we have x minus 2 square the left equal to the right. We have the square root of x. We square the right. Now, on expanding the left-hand side, we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. And this is equal to, now notice that this square cancels out the square root, leaving behind x. Now, let's subtract x from both sides. So, subtract x from the left and also subtract x from the right. Now, subtracting, we have x squared minus 4x minus x gives minus 5x. Then we have plus 4 equal to x minus x is 0. So we have a nice quadratic equation. And the good thing about this quadratic equation is that it can be factorized. So the factors of 4 that we're going to be using will be negative 4 and negative 1. Now the factor will then be x minus 4 times x minus 1 and this is equal to 0 and from the first candidate x minus 4 is equal to 0 that means the value of x will be equal to 4 then from the second candidate i'm going to be putting all here x minus 1 is equal to 0 that means the value of x from here is equal to 1 but now recall our condition that x must be value from 2 and above. And 1 is clearly lesser than 2. So we're going to be rejecting the second solution for x. So this is a real solution for x. Now this takes us to our second case, which will be our case B, since we just finished case A. Now let's go. For this second case, which is our case B, all we have to do is to move one to the right hand side so that we have y plus u to be equal to, as one crosses, it becomes minus one. Now let's go back to our substitution. Recall that we said let the square root of x be y. And we also said the terms inside of the bracket, which is x minus two, be equal to u. Let's put this substitution here. Our y, our y is the square root of x, so I'm going to be putting the square root of x in place of y, plus u, our u is x minus 2, so I'm going to be putting x minus 2, and this is equal to minus 1. Now let's isolate this square root of x by moving x and negative 2 to the right hand side. So we have the square root of x to be equal to negative 1. As negative 2 crosses, it becomes plus 2. And as x crosses, it becomes minus x. So this simplifies into the square root of x equal to minus 1 plus 2. That will be 1 minus x. Very good. And now let's establish a condition here as we see a square root on one side of the equation. So a square root means numbers that are 0 or bigger which is positive numbers. So if the left-hand side is positive, that means the right-hand side must also be positive. In other words, we're saying that one minus x must be zero or positive. 
So we're trying to say here, if we are going to rewrite this, that x must be values that are lesser than 1, or values that are 1 or lesser. So take note of this condition, very, very important. Now, to get rid of this square root, we take the square of both sides. So I'll take the square of the left-hand side. This is equal to, I'll take the square of the right-hand side. Now, this square cancels out the square root, leaving x to be equal to, now we're going to be expanding this. So this will give on expansion 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Good. Now, to move this x to the right-hand side, we subtract x from both sides of the equation. And on subtracting, x minus x is 0. This is equal to 1 minus 2x minus x, that will be minus 3x, then plus x squared. Well, we can rewrite this equation by rearranging correctly. x squared minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0. A nice quadratic equation. Now, we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this. Our a from here is 1, our b is negative 3, and our c is 1. So looking for x, we have on our quadratic equation, x equal to negative b. b is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that will be negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So this simplifies into x equal to negative times negative is positive. So this will be 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1 times 1 is 4 all over 2 times 1. That will be 2. So this makes x to be 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4. That will be 5 all over 2. So there are two values of x from here. The first one is 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2, while the other one is 3 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Now recall from our given condition that the values of x can be 1 and below. But what we have here this value is bigger than 1, so we're going to be rejecting this. But this one is lower than 1, which means this is accepted. So we have two values of x in our given equation that we're told to solve. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. Like I always say, until next time,